I spoke at the beginning because of September 11th. But mm -hmm. um, first time, I think it's the first time I met Ralph Northam. It was in his office. We were having our inauguration, uh, getting you know our, all of our stuff, and I was about to be inaugurated, and uh, or not inaugurated, sworn in. Excuse me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I knew you were. See, you're. I'm not. I'm not. Not yet. I'm thinking of Hillary. I'm thinking of Hillary. Uh, yeah. but, um, so I, I had met um, I, people like Eileen. I work with all the time because we Democratic delegates have to work together. In fact, we had to stand together. And I'm proud to say that we stood together to defend every single one of Terry McCullough's speeches. Right. Right. Yeah. If you want to know why elections matter, then 34 may seem small, but it's bigger than 33. Right. And yeah. uh, there, out of 100 delegates in the House of Delegates, Republicans need two thirds to overturn the governor's veto. And we all said to each other, don't you get sick. Yeah. <laughs> we're wheeling you in. Yeah. But, but that's right, we're called Dr. North. <laughs> uh, but uh, Eileen and I and all, all the Democratic delegates were very close together. We meet every day, and I know them all very well. I also know, maybe not as well, but I certainly know uh, Democratic senators. We, we meet together on a regular basis. We do things with them, and, and uh, you know, I, I work very well with them. I also get to know the Republican delegates. Uh, they maybe don't work as well with us, but sometimes they do. And in fact, I did manage to work across the aisle on three separate bills, which I'll briefly tell you about. That They're not the ones that you would want to, I mean, they're good bills, but the bills that I had to raise the minimum wage and to have realistic gun regulation and to, uh, to, to stop LGBT discrimination and to do things like Medicaid expansion and, and, and I mean, those bills didn't succeed. <laughs> but the bills that did succeed, I was able to work across the aisle, I had a bill that allows, for example, emergency medical personnel to cross state lines. Good bipartisan measure uh, that, uh, that we got passed with, uh, with the Delegate Stalin. Uh, two other bills, one to help prosecute cyber stalking, to help go after, it's kind of a new, new form of stalking, we want to make sure we can prosecute that. And the third was to reform the Metro Board, uh, right here. Uh, Metro, as you know, is having its troubles. But one of the things uh, that the Metro needed was we have Metro is Alexandria, is, is Virginia, Maryland, District of Columbia, and the federal government. And the federal government, for some reason, had it under the General Services Administration, which didn't make any sense. It really should have been under the U.S. Department of Transportation, because they're the ones who regulate, oversee it, and fund it. And Don over here in Congress voted to do that at the federal level, but we also had to do it at the Virginia level. That's another bipartisan bill that I got passed. Um, but what I was going to say is, so I've worked with even my Republican House delegates, some I can work with, some I can't, to be honest with you. That doesn't surprise some of you. But the people who I never had met before were the Republican senators. Because they're like, you know, they're not my fellow Democrats, and they're not in my house. So I really didn't know them at all. Well, um, Ralph had a freshman gathering where all the newly elected got together for, for breakfast, one early morning, uh, right, right before session started, maybe the day after session started. And I met a woman, a senator by the name of Amanda Chase. <clears throat> Amanda Chase is a very, very conservative Republican. Okay? She is, uh, Eric Cantor is too liberal for her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was with Dave Bratt all the way. Okay? She is, she is Tea Party and proud of it. Amanda and I got to talking. And of course, we don't agree on climate change, and we don't agree on guns, and we don't agree on abortion. That's obvious. But we agreed on something. We agreed on transparency. We both agreed that you people in this room and her people down in Chesterfield and everyone in Virginia can't always get to Richmond at 6 a.m. in the morning and watch all our committee hearings because y'all have jobs and work to do. And frankly, they announce these things usually the day before. So what happens in, in committees, and particularly in subcommittees in the House of Delegates, is they'll kill one of my fine bills, like a bill to, to allow the minimum wage to be increased. Uh, and no one knows about it, or we just hear the bill died. It died in committee. But you don't hear the arguments. You don't see what they said against it. You don't even get the vote count. You just hear the bill died in committee. And Amanda and I, though we disagree on virtually everything, agreed the public has a right to know. So I told Amanda that I was going to videotape every single subcommittee and committee that handled my bills, so at least my bills, everyone could see you know, how they argued against my bill to not let terrorists have guns, which seems to be pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how they argued against my bill for LGBT equality, how they argued against my bills on, on um, 
everything from uh, Family Medical Leave Act, which I put in. Um, and so I told her I was going to film it. She said, you know, I want to do that. I'm going to film that too. I said, let's form the Virginia Transparency Caucus. And so this right-wing Republican senator and this progressive Democratic delegate got together and we formed the Virginia Transparency Caucus. And we now have about 10% of the General Assembly as part of our caucus. And all of us are committed. Because we may not agree on the issues, but we agree that everyone should know what's going on. Now, I've got like Paul Harvey telling the rest of the story. Uh, I, I put a little something in her juice. <laughs> She gives me a hug every time she sees her, and she tells me I'm wrong on guns, and I tell her she's wrong on guns, and you know. But but the point is, there are things we can work across the aisle to do, and and, it's, and a lot of people said, "Yo, freshmen doing this kind of stuff? Why not? If it's a good idea, it it should be done." So I, I'm that's just my first year. I mean, I'm brand new. I, Eileen's been there a long time. She has, she, and in fact, Eileen's been great. She's been very much my mentor. I've gone to her for many questions. And uh, there are many, many good Democrats there, but we are lonely. <laughs> We're really lonely. Oh, no. We need oh, more. Yes. We need 17 more friends. Yes. <laughs> I don't just pick that number out of the air. 30, <laughs> yeah, 17 more friends. Uh, and so thank you all for being here, because the entire country obviously is focused now on the election of our lives. Um, I do think that I'm um, really looking forward to President Hillary Rodden Clinton. <laughs> I did an interview on CNN this yeah. morning, and I was like, yeah. please, I want that to be my president. Yeah, but she's, she's so wonderful in a million ways, and this isn't about her, although I can tell you long, maybe you know on Facebook, I'm constantly defending Hillary, mm -hmm. if you've read my oh, Facebook. Yeah. Um, but the other guy, I think, is the apocalypse. I, I think, uh, I, mean, I, I don't even want to take my brain mm -hmm. to the possibility. So we all have to work really hard for 2016, but, and I don't mean to be complacent, I think she's got it. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to knock on. No, knock, on knock on. Knock on wood. I think she's. But I got to tell you. Yeah, we can't rest. Mm -hmm. no. A year from now. Yeah. We need to get this guy being our governor. Yes. Yeah. Because. It's not just because he's a really nice guy and he takes care of children and and he's just a great guy, which he is, and not just because, but if you saw the bills the Republicans passed out of the General Assembly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm that if it had not been for Terry McCullough's veto, mm -hmm. would have become law, mm -hmm. we would be North Carolina. Yes. Mm -hmm. We yeah. would be Mississippi. Right. Yeah. Thank God for the governor, thank yes. God for his veto, and thank yes. God we had enough people to sustain his veto. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they control the General Assembly right now, and if we don't have Ralph, it's not going to be fun for me or Eileen or any of you in this room. So um, elect Hillary, elect Don Beyer, I'm not really worried about your race, Don. I think we have to knock on your race. I like Don Meyer. But a year from now, please help me elect this man, Governor.